Good day, I am Musigan Madison Cantillo and for this video, I'm gonna perform a focused respiratory assessment. So the rationale for doing this procedure is to determine or to determine, yes, the client's current status and his respiratory function so that if there are fine and abnormalities, therefore, we can make a proper nursing intervention for that. So prior doing the procedure, I need first to introduce myself to the client. The rationale for doing this is to build rapport and to make my client know me or he, who, he, who is he talking to. Next is I need to explain plan and procedure to the client. The rationale for doing this is in order for my client to be aware what we will be going to do and why it is necessary so that he can cooperate well. Next is I need to provide privacy for my client. The rationale for doing this is in order for my client to be comfortable while doing the procedure and in order also to prevent embarrassment. So, prior also doing the procedure, I need first to, or I need also to wash my hands and observe other infection control procedure. The rationale for doing this is to prevent the spreading of microorganisms and also preventing the, the spreading of infectious diseases. So, before I proceed on the implementation proper, I need first to have an assessment for my client or I need first to ask some questions or history for my client. So I will now start in introducing myself. So good day sir, I am Lisa Madison Cantillo, your student nurse from Pamantasa ng Nuso de Marquina and today we'll be having a focused respiratory assessment. Will that be fine for you? Right, now before we start that assessment i have some questions for you will that be fine so do you have any family history of respiratory illness like asthma like cancer like tuberculosis or any history of allergies good may i ask if do you smoke that's good and may i also ask if do you have do you experience any cough these past few days Okay, that's fine. So after gathering the data, after asking questions to my client, so we will now proceed on the implementation proper. So for this procedure, I need to. Oh, so for this procedure, I will use the IPA method or IPPA, which is also known as inspection, palpation, percussion, and auscultation. So these methods are very significant or very important method to be performed because it really determines whether there is a problem on the respiratory function of the client or or not so i will now start on the inspection so for the inspection i need first to ins inspect for the for the anterior thorax of my client so in the anterior thorax, I will observe for the breathing pattern of my client. So as what I am observing right now, my client's breathing pattern is quiet and it is also rhythmic, which means that the pattern or the breathing pattern is regular. And I can also observe that it is effortless and it indicates that it is normal. So for the posterior thorax of my client, I need here to inspect for the shape and symmetry of the thorax. So the normal findings in here is the thorax should be symmetric. So as what I have observing right now, my client's thorax is symmetric and this indicates that it is normal. So next is I need to inspect for, my, for the spinal alignment of my client. <coughs> In this procedure or in this step, I have to ask my client to stand up and I will place myself on the lateral side, on the lateral position of the client in order for me to see the spinal alignment. So I will ask now the client to stand up. Sir, can you, may you please stand up for a while? I will just check for your spinal alignment. So in here, after the patient stand up, I will position myself on the side of the client to check the spinal alignment. Okay. So as what I am observing right now, the 
client's final alignment or the spinal alignment of the of the client is vertically aligned which means or which indicates that it is normal so you may now sit down sir okay so i am done on the inspection method i will now proceed on the palpation method so in palpation method i will first go on the anterior thorax so in here i have to place my two two hands on the lower thorax of the client so in placing my two two palms on the lower thorax of the client i have to observe on my thumbs as i as i ask my client to take a deep breath normally my thumb should separate so let's see if it will separate so sir can you please take a deep breath so yeah so again So as you have observed, or as I have also observed, my client, my thumb separates. So which means that it is normal. So if my thumb doesn't separate, there is a indication that it is abnormal. So as for my client, it is normal because my thumb separates as he take a deep breath. So I will also palpate for the uh, tactile premitus. So. There are different. There, there are sites that I will palpate, and and there is also a sequence. So per site, there should be a vibration that I will feel as he as my client say the word that I will instruct him. So I will instruct him to to say blue moon per site, and in that sequence, I have to feel vibration. So I will start here. I will start here. So, sir, can you please take blue moon? Blue moon. Next here. Can blue you please? Moon. Then here. Blue 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 moon. So. I felt vibration on all of the sides, which means that this is, it is normal. So it is also a normal finding that, that there is a decrease in the vibration in over the heart area and on the, on the breast. So I will now proceed on the posterior thorax. In palpating the posterior thorax, I will do I will do the same the same procedure that I did on the on the anterior thorax so i also have to observe the separation of my thumb as i ask my client to take a deep breath Okay. So can you take a deep breath, sir? Exhale. And another. Exhale. Okay, so as what I have observed, or uh, as what we have seen, my thumb separated, so it is normal. So I will also I will also test for the tactile fremitus of my client on the posterior thorax. So I will also ask my client to say the phrase "blue moon" as I as I palpate the sites and as I do the sequence. So, sir, we will start here. Sir, can you say "blue moon"? Can you say it again? Can you say it again, sir? Can you say it again? All right. So I felt the vibration as he he dictate or as he as he said the word the phrase blue moon, which means that it is normal. So after doing the two methods, 
I am done with inspection. I am done with palpation. Now we will be going on the percussion. So in percussion, it is important to do this method because it determines if the lungs is being filled or the lung tissue is being filled with air or liquid or solid material. So it is important to do this, this procedure. So in percussing the anterior thorax, I will now start percussing. So after percussing the anterior thorax, I will now proceed on percussing the posterior thorax. So as I percuss the, the anterior thorax, the percussion notes resonates, which means that it is normal. So I will now proceed on the posterior thorax with the same sequence of percussion. So I will start. So in doing this procedure, I need to ask my client to to bend his his head and to to make his arm cross forward. So this separates the scapula and expose more the lung tissue for percussion. So, sir, can you bend slightly bend your head and cross your arm? Okay. So I will now start percussion. Alright, so I'm done percussing the posterior thorax and the percussion notes resonate, so which means that it is normal. So I'm done, I'm done with inspection, palpation, percussion, and the last part will be the auscultation. So I will now auscultate the clients in specific sites and of course in using different sequence. So the rationale for doing auscultation is to determine if the patient has a normal breathing sound or if there's any adventitious sounds or any abnormal breath sounds. This can include crackles, which means that the the lungs of the patient is, is maybe filled with water or it may also we may also hear wheezes or it may indicate that there is a narrowing of the airway. So it is important, really important to auscultate to determine those those breath sounds because these breath sounds in a uh, these breath sounds leads to specific diseases okay so for this part i will be using an equipment which is the stethoscope so it is very important in auscultating and we will use the diaphragm the diaphragm hurts a high pitch sound so we will use this in this procedure so <clears throat> 
the sequence that we will be using is the same sequence that what we use on the percussion. So we will now start. So in doing this, we have to ask the client to take a slow and deep breath and exhale it. Okay, so I will now start on the anterior thorax first. Can you take a deep breath? Okay, so I'm done auscultating the, the anterior thorax and I didn't hear any adventitious sounds, breath sounds, or any abnormal breath sounds, which means that the respirations or the breath sounds of the client is in normal. So I will now proceed on the posterior thorax. Can you take a big picture? I'm done percussing, I rather escultating the posterior thorax and I heard no abnorm abnormal breath sounds or I heard no adventitious breath sounds which means that there is no evidence of crackles, wheezes or any abnormal breath sounds which means that the breath sound of my client is all normal. So. That's all for my return demonstration for today. And after doing all of the procedure, I have, as a nurse, I need to document all of the data that I gathered. I need to document the procedure that I've done to the client. And, and I need also to wash my hands after the procedure to prevent also the spreading of microorganisms from the nurse to the patient and vice versa. And it is important to assist the client in, in his needs after the assessment. So that's all for my return demonstration. Thank you very much and have a nice day.